You're listening to Barry Burnett on Investing Insights with Barry Burnett on Talk Radio 790 KABC. I want to hear from you. Email barry at barryburnett.net. Ask us your questions. Ask us anything that you need on tips. Ask to get a hold of our spectacular special guests. And also ask for a white paper, Eight Vital Protections. We've got a tremendous crew in the, uh, in the studio right now. We have Dave Schramm, the rocket scientist of FICO Scores and Credit. Jordan Must, the president of Capital Markets and Risk Management and chief underwriter for Augusta Financial. And Aaron Demeray, my favorite loan officer in the universe who's closed 703 out of 703 he told me he could close. Aaron, what's the craziest thing you ever saw in the middle of a loan process? By far, the most upsetting for, thing for me in the loan business is, is fraudulent paperwork, um, specifically fraudulent income and tax returns. So people still try to pull the wool over your eyes? They do. Yeah. <laughs> they do. But they, they don't realize that you have to submit your paperwork to the IRS for verification? There's a system of checks and balances that we go through that make it impossible to commit loan fraud via with false tax returns. Everybody in America signs what's called a 4506T form, which allows the lender, and they do it in every single transaction, to contact the IRS, compare what we have in the file with what the IRS has on record. Okay. And that way, that catches any type of fraudulent activity. So they still try it, right? People are a lot sharper now, or, or the, the word's out. You can't do fraudulent loans anymore. It hasn't been able, to, you haven't really been able to do that for years now. Good. But let's hope that they don't just look for some other knuckleheaded way around it. We're dealing with investors and entrepreneurs, people who are buying homes and duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, shopping centers, industrial parks, and everything else. These are people who have done typically at least one loan. Our listeners are in the position where they've done things, but many of our listeners haven't done a loan or a refinance in, say, since the mortgage meltdown of the 2008-2010 cycle. So maybe they don't know that the rules and laws have changed. How do we educate them to the new stratum? Uh, So, uh, Jordan, to you, on the underwriting side and risk management, what is it that you're seeing that you're passionate about, that you want our listeners to know? I think the great thing right now is we've seen the quality of borrower be just at an absolute all-time high. We've seen better credit scores than ever before. We've seen borrowers with great income. You don't have to have those things to do an investor loan in this day and age. But we are seeing people that are really qualified and are taking good care of themselves. You can actually go down on an investment property loan to his credit score as low as 620. The rates are still wonderful. You can do a refinance if you're stuck in some mortgage where maybe you're underwater. Now your investment property has achieved some equity and you want to get rid of a high interest rate loan that you had from back in the day. So we've really seen some dramatic improvement in the market. You can use all the rental income to help you qualify. So I think people are surprised. They hear a lot of negatives about how it's so difficult to qualify for a mortgage and lending is so tight. I don't see it that way. We see a wonderful quality of borrower right now. People's tax returns are generally better than they think. And even if you're an investor and you think you can't qualify because you have three or four properties, I don't think many people realize that when we look at your tax returns, a lot of the things in your property that you see as a negative, we actually add back. Most investors have large amounts of depreciation on their tax returns. We add that back to your income. So I think people would be surprised at how much they'll qualify for and how easily they'll qualify for. Don't let the reports in the media about how tight lending is or how it's impossible to get a loan. I wouldn't use that to as an excuse not to call a knowledgeable professional and see if you can qualify. Excellent. Well, okay. I'm, yeah. just, I'm sorry. Just real quickly, what I always tell my clients is that if you – qualify for a home loan, no matter what you've heard about the stringent guidelines, you're going to get a home loan. It, okay. It will. I, the loans definitely work. There's plenty of money out there, and the loan business is, is going full swing right now. You just have to fit the guidelines. But that includes investors, and it's not just homes. It's single family, one to four. Now, we because this isn't your forte, but the commercial lending, I also know that our special expert guests will come and say similar things about the commercial 
loan stratums, but things have changed and it's well, a little looser, right? Again, I always reassure my clients, you're going to get a home loan. You've got the right income, you've got the right assets, you've got the right FICO score, you are definitely going to get a home loan. Okay, yeah. cool. Barry, there's yeah. an important thing to point to make about credit scores. Mm-hmm. The lenders deal with what are called mortgage FICO scores. Yes. That's a very specific product. It is not what people see online when they check their credit scores. Okay, big Thanks, deal. Dave. That's that- excellent, Dave. Thank you. So mm-hmm. many times we hear people say, oh, I ran my credit online. I've got an 800 score. We go to pull a mortgage report, a lender report, and they have a 650 because we pull a much more detailed report and an accurate report than you typically would get online euros. for free. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not even the FICO product that people get online. It's a product called Vantage Scores, which is owned by the three credit reporting agencies purely for money-making purposes, in my opinion. Oh, really? <laughs> no surprise there. Um, I don't know of a creditor or lender that uses those online scores. Okay. No. Uh, we, all, we all pull direct from the agencies. Each of the three bureaus we pull direct from using a, uh, again, a lender report and a scoring model that is used by the lending industry. Yep. And Dave's right. It's, it's very different than the garbage you get online. Now, yeah. Dave, you published a book on the Fair Isaacs Matrix and how it really impacts people. Uh, any of that still uh, applicable? Well, it's still applicable, although the product hasn't been uh, updated for the changes in FICO. FICO updates any given product, including mortgage scores, four to six times a year. But the major point is the online scores, don't trust them for your loan qualifying. Only the mortgage lending can pull a real mortgage FICO score. Right. Okay. And, and FICO scores are usually lower to very much lower than the scores people get online. Although occasionally the FICOs are higher. There's no way to convert Th- that would the, be those in the online category scores. Of but, pleasant surprise. But the saving grace is though we we take the middle score out of all three scores. So you're not going to get hit for the lowest FICO score because they're definitely going to be lower than what you hear when you go get your car and buy it at the car dealer. They're always lower than that, the real FICO scores. But we take the mid score, not the lowest ones. Everybody has to deal with credit and everybody has to deal with loans whether you're buying or selling, even if you're a cash buyer, it really impacts the marketplace. What we're dealing with is a a very aggressive marketplace with a lot of changes that change daily, rates change by the hour, but we're dealing with three professionals that if you call us or if you if, if you go on our, our website, barryburnett.net, you can register to get in touch with these spectacular professionals. This, is this, Aaron, just, is this a great time to, to uh, refinance? It's always a great time to refinance, Barry. However, specifically to your question, rates are definitely at a, a near all-time low. What, what were the rates when you started? When I started in, in 1988, the interest rates were in the 12 to 13 percent range. Yeah, they dropped all the way down to that by well, that time. F- before my day, yeah, they're 18 yeah. to 19 percent. I started in '73. The interest rates had just gone to 13 and a half. So I thought 13 percent was pretty cool compared to 18. And people made a lot of money at the time. Absolutely. But, but but this is a spectacular time to refinance and reinvest. Again, rates are at a near historic low. So if they want to call you, it's 818-399-1571. Aaron Demeray, 818-399-1571. Now, um, Jordan, I understand that if you can prove that you don't need the money, they'll give you all you ask for. Exactly. As long as you don't need it, you can get a loan. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Okay. But now, I, I think investors, I think a lot of people who are looking to do investment property are surprised by how easily they actually do qualify. People forget that there is going to be rental income of the property, the theoretical rental income that will help them qualify. So people look at it and say, oh, I can't afford a $2,000 payment for rental property. Well, that rental property is going to generate rent, of course. And those figures do get on most loan programs figured into your qualification. And it'd be surprising how easy it is to actually qualify for these things. And that's why you have to talk to someone who knows the business very well. It really, 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 despite all the reports, it's actually a pretty simple mortgage market. Okay, simple and unbelievably inexpensive. Uh, in my day, I started, wa- wrote it all the way up where a 30 year mortgage was as, as high as 21% fixed and yet people were still buying and selling. Fewer people, but there were still <laughs> profitability to be made. Now, I, I do want to tell our listeners, whatever you buy and sell is income and hopefully positive income. 
Whatever you buy and keep is wealth. Now, sometimes people get caught in a crack and they have to restart. Dave, have you ever seen people come to you that ask for a credit restart? Absolutely. And yet some of them come in with debt that you look at and you say, we can do, we can renegotiate this debt. Do you help people do that? Absolutely. Okay. You had a success recently that uh, just kind of blew my mind, rolled my eyes back into my head. Very briefly, talk about that. Sure. It was a $98,700 uh, debt to a major national bank. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Uh, client was actually in Connecticut, which was significant to the time it took to get this result. For a California resident, it would have been very fast. But uh, ultimately, after six months of pressure on that major bank, $98,752 was 100% eliminated. Whoa, that's big. A lot of it, that, that was eliminated and that was legal and how, what did it do to their FICO the score? The bank wrote it off. And what did it do to their FICO score? Uh, it had no effect on their FICO scores. Okay, but they saved a lot of money. A lot of money. Well, they were trying to refinance to today's lower rates. Right. And there was a lot of work that went into that, but they could not have that $100,000 of debt uh -huh. as owing and still qualify for the mortgage loan that they sought. The special guests we have with us have been have made this a, a wonderful show. Aaron Demeray, Augusta Financial, loan officer since 1988, very trusted friend. Jordan Must, who supports their capital markets and risk management with Augusta Financial, president of that group. And Dave Schramm, the rocket scientist of FICO scores and credit. This is Barry Burnett with Investing Insights with Barry Burnett. Thank you very much for listening to Your Investment Show.